environmental problems. Um, I have mentioned here the environmental sustainability, but of course now we can all uh, also add, add to this list pandemics. Um, and behavior change interventions range from individual level psychological strategies to more uh, higher level strategies. So, so they are not limited to psychological approaches uh, only. Psychology can also inform, for example, legislative uh, strategies as we have seen in pre previous symposia. And uh, behavior change can re refer to that of the citizen directly or the service providers uh, in, in different service sectors or public sector. And, and in recent years, uh, there has been calls for more use of behavioral science in public policy. Here is a very new collaboration on behavioral, environmental, social and systems interventions for pandemic preparedness, BESI collaboration. Uh, this is in response to the fact that there are lots of uh, pharmacological trials uh, in, in uh, or kind of uh, biomedical trials to uh, somehow take care of this crisis, but preventive interventions to tackle, tackle the pandemic are so very rare, unfortunately. And they have um, this weekly scorecard of control trials. Here is the currently in, in um, October, there are registered drug trials on COVID-19, almost 1500. But for the BESI trials, behavioral, environmental, social and systems interventions, uh, only eight trials uh, registered. So this is a huge imbalance, of course, even though we know that behavioral solutions uh, could be the key. And I'm sure that we will hear excellent um, updates on this from uh, Professor Miranda Brown in, in just a minute. Uh, just to briefly go overview of this argument project, is to advance the quality of academic research on influencing behavior change, to combine and integrate aspects from different scientific disciplines, to strengthen solution-oriented social and behavioral science, and to help uh, us all active in this area to find novel forms of collaboration and synergies. Especially in Finland, uh, uh, this, uh, we, we are going to uh, develop a network of, of experts and practitioners in this area and Finland as part of this project. But of course, lovely to have this international uh, collaboration in this symposium. And also to improve opportunities to conduct high quality intervention research and to enhance use of research and science in designing policy. And then to communicate contributions of science and improve practice in several different applied areas, including social work, including uh, organizational uh, leadership, including uh, discrimination reduction. So the five symposia that we have had, uh, and most of the talks have been recorded. I'm, I'm telling ab about this to you because some of you who are new to the BESP project might find uh, our previous symposia very useful. Uh, the recordings are publicly available. So the first symposium uh, last year was about intervention evaluation and uh, especially field experiments to evaluate these interventions. Then how to develop public policy and interventions based on behavioral insights. Then we had a smaller symposium on reverse translation and how we can uh, use innovations and good practice uh, as as starting point for the research and use make practice based evidence rather than starting always from the science and 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 focus only on evidence based practice and then implementation uh, into real world and now the last more kind of overarching uh, topic uh, complexity and we will have as last part of the project creation of a uh, toolbox for policymakers to better utilize behavioral science knowledge in policy making. This, this will happen over this winter. And we will probably also be able to report on that, but that's, that's uh, happening in the Finnish context, so more nationally then. Uh, briefly, just going through the phases of intervention research that I've uh, shown in one of the previous uh, earlier symposia. So this is the United Kingdom Medical Research Guidance on uh, complex interventions that is used in many um, behavior change intervention projects 
as the backbone for the research. So um, basically, we had the, uh, the first symposium was focusing on the evaluation of, um, of evaluation aspects of behavior change interventions. The second symposium was focusing on kind of the first part of the whole cycle, so the developing of the interventions. And then the fourth symposium was, was on implementing effective interventions to the real world efficiently. And maybe also using behavioral and social sciences to help in that process. What is very lovely to see in the world now that the European Commission, OECD, many national governments all over the world have been more and more interested in using behavioral insights in policy. And here is the OECD toolkit published uh, just um, last year. Um, so uh, to kind of start helping governments make more use of the, the, the knowledge that we have of people's behavior and not, not assuming, not making policies blindly and, and uh, disregarding uh, how people actually behave. And uh, this uh, toolkit has a basic framework that is actually very similar to many of the intervention uh, research frameworks that we have. So starting from identifying uh, 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 the behaviors that are needed to change and uh, analyzing and understand it from a behavioral science perspective, uh, trying to understand the strategies that will be helpful for changing this behavior in this uh, population and context, then doing an intervention study to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of the strategies and then planning for implementation. So if we put it, put this uh, basic framework uh, components here, you can see that they fall nicely into also the UK MRC uh, framework. And, uh, oh, I just want to go back to uh, make a note that Francesca Papa from uh, the Behavioral Insights Unit um, of the OECD spoke in the second BESP symposium about a year ago, and her excellent talk is also available online if you want to hear more about um, the OECD approach. Just uh, here are some, some um, showing the symposium. These talks are available for viewing from the first BESP symposium on evaluation, and this is behavioral insights in developing interventions. So I warmly recommend uh, using these. And um, I think, uh, especially in this symposium, we got questions from the audience that is it okay to use these lectures as part of teaching? And I think most, or if not all of the speakers were happy uh, for um, university teachers and other teachers to use, use this as material for their students, because it's of course everyone's uh, benefit, win-win situation than that this, um, knowledge get, gets um, kind of disseminated. So just uh, last few words before, before moving on to the practical um, um, instructions. So science can obviously help society and the European Commission first uh, published uh, this kind of report of uh, behavioral insights applied to policy and concluding that insights from behavioral sciences are contributing to reshaping public policy in a wide range of domains, employment, consumer protection, health, taxation, environment and transport. So this is, I think, uh, many of us who are working in this domain are, are kind, kind of uh, taking this as a given that there will be uses of behavioral science to public policy. But then also for those who are worried about basic science, a focus on societal problems can also help science. I recommend this excellent paper by Duncan Watts, who is both a sociologist and a physicist, who is saying that uh, much of our social science is too much focused and uh, kind of uh, theory uh, focused, whereas uh, also theory development could benefit from being more focused on the problems and developing solutions. And, and then also feeding back to the theory uh, development and fundamental understanding of issues. All right, so to this symposium, which is focusing on the very uh, 
crucial aspect of much of behavior change and policy issues, complexity. That's an excellent lineup of speakers who are very grateful for, for all, the, all the speakers of this symposium. And I think all of the speakers, Sarmita, correct me if I'm wrong, all the speakers have uh, agreed to recording the presentation again, and these will be shared on the website so you can use them later. And we have, um, we have uh, possibilities for interactions. Of course, one of the goals was to bridge interdisciplinary, build interdisciplinary bridges. And um, we will have in this Zoom the opportunity to uh, type your questions uh, on the Q&A section. All of the speakers will be attending Q&A, uh, but Gwen Marchand is the only one who is in the middle of the night for her. After her recorded talk, you can type your questions in Slack or Facebook, but all the other speakers will be answering your questions uh, here in Zoom. So type your questions and comments in the Q&A window and, and you can also present them or then we will do, do so that I will, um, I will read them out loud. And you can then additionally vote for your favorite question in the Q&A section. And then uh, do go to the Slack space and meet other participants. There are all already lively discussions. If you don't prefer Slack, uh, please go to Facebook and the best forum. And uh, 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 Gwen Marchand is going to answer questions both on Slack and, and the best forum afterwards. And I hope many of the other speakers as well. The Twitter handle is uh, best thin. And, um, and uh, oh, this is very important. Acknowledging and thanking the organizing team of this symposium coordinator, Elina Renko, and then uh, Sarmite Puukko, Mintu, Palsola and Matti Heino. So thank you so much for your hard work to get this uh, symposium together. And uh, the audience, if you have tech problems, you can use the chat uh, to ask help, help there. So I think um, this is it for me. Uh, I'll now um, introduce our speaker.